We started this chapter talking about biological mechanics, which didn't have anything to do with humans. And then we added the possibility that humans might be killing some of this fish. We talked about that being the harvest, and we discussed yield. So harvest and yield are the same thing. And we discussed sustainable yield or steady state yield. The next question we want to ask is what determines fishing effort? So fishing effort is the, well, it's the effort that humans put into fishing. Uh, what, is the, what is the economic determinants of that? Well, firms are going to choose fishing effort to maximize profit. And profit has to do with total revenue and total cost. And revenue has to do with the price of the output times quantity. Costs also have to do with prices of input. We don't have any prices yet. And so now's the point in the discussion where we need to add prices to this story and dollars. So we're going to draw a new graph. And the horizontal axis is going to be fishing effort just like in the upper left. But the vertical axis is going to be dollars. First I want to think about revenues. You know the total revenue is price times quantity. So P's price here. Quantity is what we call yield. And in particular, I want to discuss here the steady state yield. Which I can abbreviate SS yield. Now, it can be interesting to discuss non-steady state fisheries, but the mathematics becomes much harder and so we're not going to do that in this class. I do it in 5250, but, but not in this class. You might wonder about driving a fish stock to extinction. Of course, that's an unsustainable way to manage the fishery. So questions of unsustainable fisheries are pretty interesting and important in the real world. But again, we don't have enough math to be able to, to handle that in any kind of systematic way. In, in this class. We'll talk about it a little bit, but not systematically. So getting back to total revenue, we're going to assume that the price is constant because we're not interested in thinking about how price changes. So total revenue is price times quantity. The price is constant and the quantity, well actually the quantity the yield is given by this curve here. So the yield, the Q part, is given by the graph in the upper left. How do I graph total revenue? Well, the price is a constant. Suppose price is equal to 1. If, if price were equal to 1, then total revenue would just be 1 times Q which would just be Q, which again is the same as yield. And so the fishing effort graph would be exactly the same as the, the graph in the upper left. The, the, uh, the units are different, but this would be exactly the same as, as this graph here. But of course the price might not be equal to 1. Um, what if the price is equal to 2? Then total revenue would be 2 times Q. Well, what that means is you take the, the curve with P is equal to 1 and you just stretch it. So let me show you how to do that. If, if fishing effort is 0 and you're at the origin, if you double 0, you just get 0. So uh, st vertically stretching this curve by factor of 2 doesn't change the origin. It also doesn't change this point here because you're vertically multipl multiplying by a factor of 2 the number 0. Well, 2 times 0 is still 0. 
but in the middle you do get a stretch and so the price is equal to 2 the sh basic shape stays the same but the gr graph gets stretched out what if the price were equal to one half well then total revenue would be one half times Q but again we have the graph of Q uh, here that, that's that's what we did before and so to get one half times Q I would just take that and multiply it by a half which would look like this roughly now what I'm going to be interested in is the general shape of the graph of total revenue versus fishing effort not the particular individual one that I happen to have if the price is equal to one or the price is equal to two or the price is equal to one half indeed you can always define the price to be equal to one just by redefining the units in which you're measuring fish so if the price were two dollars a ton if you measure fish not in tons anymore but in two ton units then the price is one dollar for two tons so so the distinction that we have between the graph when uh, when p is equal to 2 and p is equal to 1 and p is equal to 1 half are really it's not an important distinction and so what we're going to do from now on is to simplify things and just write this graph fishing effort versus total revenue as this finally how about total cost finally not in this discussion but finally in this video total cost is the function of fishing effort the more effort you put in the more it costs you if you put in suppose you put in zero effort if you put in zero effort then if you don't have any fixed costs then all your costs are zero and we're going to assume that you don't have any fixed costs and then if as effort increases as you go to the right costs presumably go up what's the simplest assumption to make the simplest assumption to make is that as fishing effort goes up costs go up linearly and that's the assumption we're going to make because we are trying to keep things simple and so therefore we're going to assume a total cost curve that's a straight line from the origin and let me just give you a preview of, the, of what we're going to do in the next video so in the next video now that we have total revenue and we have total cost then we can get profit because profits just the difference between total revenue and total cost and once we have profit then we can talk about how to maximize profit because that's what the firm wants to do and that's going to then the firm is going to adjust fishing effort in order to maximize profit so we'll be able to figure out where the profit maximum is and then we'll talk about how that changes depending on various different other things changing and whether this profit maximum is good from a social point of view or not which is something that we haven't talked about yet so that's what's going to be coming up in the next video.